When animating a project, sooner or later you'll find yourself in a situation where something you've keyframed will need to be deleted or removed. It happens all the time, especially when you're new to learning the ins and outs of how to animate. You've moved an object to the wrong spot, you've keyframed a light turning off when it ought to be on. Making mistakes is all just part of the process. When you've dug yourself a hole and need to back out of what's been done, you can. We'll show you how using a file named Deleting Keys. You can find it in the Working Files folder for this chapter. If you play things back, you'll see both the torus on the left and the chamfer box on the right have each had a little animation done to them. The torus has a taper modifier that's been changed around, while the chamfer box has been both rotated and scaled. Let's select each object individually and we'll take a look at their keyframes down on the timeline. Let's start with the blue box. You'll notice that the keyframes are being displayed in different colors. The blue color represents a scale key, while the green color identifies a rotation key. Both the boxes Rotate and Scale have been keyframed at frame zero. Therefore, we see a keyframe displaying both blue and green colors. Let's now select the torus. As for the torus, its animation involves the taper modifier that's been applied to it. Modifier keys are represented on the timeline displaying in the color black. So we can see taper keys have been set at frame 0, 50, 65, and 100. Okay, we're talking about removing animation by deleting keys. Let's start with the chamfer box on the right. The key that you see at frame 50 is designed to have the box rotate 180 degrees. If we no longer want the box to rotate, we can simply select the key on the timeline and press delete on the keyboard. Removing that key will remove the box's rotation. Let's try that. Now when you click on the key, it'll turn white, Max's way of indicating that it's been selected. Once selected, go ahead and hit delete. Let's now play things back. Now the box still scales, but the details of the rotation have been erased from its animation. Now you'll notice that we still have a single rotate key located at the first frame. This brings up a point. One key does not create animation. You need at least two keys, each containing different information in order for change to occur. You can have a key holding specific information about an object, but unless there's another key sitting along the timeline that holds different information about, in this case, the object rotating, that object won't rotate. It needs at least two rotation keys, each containing different rotational information. So with just a single key, that change, well, just don't change. It takes at least two keyframes on an object property in order for animation to occur. Let's go ahead and undo that keyframe deletion using the Control z shortcut. Let's say we instead liked the rotation on the box but wanted to eliminate the way it scaled. We'll remove the blue scale key at frame 100 a different way. Let's select the key, then right click, choosing from the menu Delete Selected Keys. If we now play things back, we'll see that the box rotates but doesn't scale. Let's undo that also, again using the Control Z shortcut. Now, if you ever run into a situation where you want to remove all the animation on an object, with the object selected, you could just simply hold down the Alt key, right click, and choose Delete Selected Animation. We'll try that, but you gotta be careful at what frame you perform the command. Let's go to frame 75 and we'll delete the box's animation. Once we've done that, we can hold down the Alt key and right click. When the menu opens, we'll choose Delete Selected Animation. Let's go ahead and scrub the timeline and we'll see the results. Check out how that left the box looking all squished down. The animation's gone, but the box was left looking like it did at the frame where we made our deletion. So if you want things to go back to the way things looked before anything was animated, be sure that when you delete your keys, you're at the first frame before tearing things out. Let's try that instead. We'll undo, go back to our first frame, then complete the command again. You can see the difference with what returning to our first frame did with our results. Now with the torus, let's select that. 
If you scrub between frames 50 and 65, you'll see that the taper modifier is basically holding its current shape. That was done by simply copying the key at 50 back to frame 65. If we didn't want that hold, instead just keeping it tapering back and forth, we could simply delete the key at 65. Let's do that. Playing back the animation, you'll see the torus now simply reshapes to the way it ends up looking at the end of the animation. We'll go ahead and undo that, again using Control-Z. Now, if we wanted all the keys in the torus removed, again, we'd need to be careful where we make the deletion because of the way things will turn out. Let's take our timeline somewhere back to the middle around frame 60 and we'll window select all our keys. With that done, let's go ahead and hit delete. Look at the shape of the object. It's now locked into looking as it did at the frame in which we deleted its keys. Let's again undo that keyframe removal. Now, there's one other option that Max offers for removing keys. And it's designed to be used when you want every key of animation stripped from a scene irrespective of the number of objects that might have been animated. The command is found under the Application menu. Clicking on the button, you'll hold your mouse in the left-hand column over the word New. When the options open over on the right side, you'll choose Keep Objects. You can also, by the way, find the command on the Quick Access Toolbar to the right of the Application button. When the dialog opens asking you to save the scene, in this case we can say no. Notice that irrespective of where you were along the timeline when you cleared the keys out, the objects return to looking just as they did at the first frame, in other words, at the start of the animation. So there you go with a bunch of different options when needing to remove one or more keyframes in a scene. Now you know you're sooner or later going to be messing up, so tuck those techniques we just covered away for safekeeping, knowing that you now have them in your bag of tricks when you need them.